Hello, people. My name is Jeffrey Mitchell. It's been a while since I've uh, come to you in this capacity or any capacity at all, let's be honest. I um, have been on a very spiritual journey that is really not spiritual at all. It's not spiritual. It's not. I'm trying to I'm trying to light it up so that this is behind me. I want that thing in the middle. I can't, I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm not at my normal residence, okay? You know, I like to be high. I like, oh, and this is my breakfast. I'm at my normal residence. I'm not at my normal residence coming to you today. But I felt it was necessary for me to fire this up and just to show myself and to show you that the boy can do remote broadcasting on an instant. How quick was it for me to... Plug everything in, fire up the cameras, and get at it, you know. <clears throat> that is what I really wanted to see. Fire up the cameras, plug it in, and see what works and what doesn't work. And let me tell you this, that $400 camera, this one, I plugged it in, turned it on, it connected, boom, just like that. No fussing, no messing around, no this, that. It just, it remembered, and it connected. This is the same camera that I can do the same thing when I go home. I just take it up, I fire it up, it finds the system it needs to connect to, boom, 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 OBS Studio, boom. And for me, again, as I was saying, that is so much, that is so exciting to me. The process, it it's seems to be about the process for me. I love the process. It's like, I like making songs more than I do having them made. Does that make sense? <laughs> when they're done, they're like, okay, you know, I mean, what pleasure is in it when they're done? Okay, they're done. You don't work on them for hours and hours and hours. You, you put everything into it. Well, everything into it. And then you say to yourself, okay, we're done with that one. And you're, you're proud of it. And it's like on to the next one. But for me, it's always about the process. It's about cleaning. I love going through my data, data sorting, organizing, you know, going through my storage inventory. I have spreadsheets of all my, where all my stuff is at. And just the whole thing, you know, just the whole organization, manipulation, managerial of life's chores and my inventory and my data. And oh God, do I love my data. I love my data. Ooh, that seems loud, huh? I got, do I got it turned up? I might have it turned up too loud, huh? Yeah, anyway. I like it loud. Y'all know I like it loud. I like for it to be loud. I like for it to be loud. Practicing camera changes. Is it working? Am I, see, because I, I can't look at the screen and what I'm looking at, so I'm guessing this is the right camera being picked. Is it? Is it? Are we sure? Can we ever be sure? Anyhow, yeah, things happening pretty good. I have an allergy issues. Getting headaches and allergies and flare ups. And I was thinking, you really don't know how good you feel until you don't feel good anymore. And when I was having allergies and feeling heavy and drained and whatever, and you know, just my headache and nose throbbing and eyes running or whatever was going on, we still try to figure it out. To be honest, we still try to figure it out. So, I'm at the point now when I go to the doctor, it's not the doctor's responsibility to fix me. It's my responsibility to fix me and have the doctor help me. He don't know what's going on. He's just there. I mean, everybody, I mean, some people do have that overwhelming compassion, that overwhelming desire to connect with a person and try to understand inside their head. Some people probably even have a natural ability to pull that out of somebody or connect to them. But most times it's a job. It's like when I'm doing my job, people call me. It's like, help me, fix me, help me. You have to tell me what hurts first. You have to tell me what's going on first. And basically, sometimes I'm in a mood. The onus is on the user to tell me what I need to do or what's, or at least what's going on. <clears throat> you just can't walk up to the doctor and say, this hurts, fix it. No, you got to. You gotta, I, I feel like I take on the responsibility that where I have to have so much information and I put so much responsibility on myself that I'm responsible. I'm responsible if my car breaks, I take it to an expert, but I'm responsible for telling him, I'm not even telling him, I'm responsible for all of it. I'm responsible for anything that happens to me. 
regardless of the experts that I use to go get and help me, the doctors, I mean, if I'm laying there on the on my deathbed, or, I mean, if I was in an accident and I'm uh, pretty much, you know, knocked out and, uh, and, and, you know, I can't communicate. Well, in that case, it's not on me. But any other way, you have to accept, I feel people have to accept responsibility for everything that happens to them in their life. And, and ultimately, ultimately, you have to accept responsibility for everything that happens to you. Anything and everything, accidental, coincidence, you know, unprecedented, whatever, whatever, whatever. Okay, I got to sign in. Let me pause and sign in. I mean, because like, face it, and I know it, and I say this to myself all the time, my life is good. My life is good and easy. It's just, my life is just good and tremendously easy. And sometimes I'm laying there thinking to myself, my life is just so good. Why do I, do I deserve this life? What did I do to get this life? Because I look around and see other people talking about life and things they're going through and maybe had the opportunities and not had the opportunities that I had or whatever situations they were born into or they lived at or things that happened to them, unfortunately, fortunately, or whatever, whatever. I always think, how come, what am I doing that makes me feel that my life is just so freaking wonderful? And I look around, I go, I get like, not nervous, but I go like, what am I doing? <laughs> what is it about me that makes things so, you know, but, okay, I got to punch it. I don't know why I made it such a big deal about logging in. It's not like I have to, um, it's not like I have to, uh, you know, talk to somebody or go online or anything. I just had to like click a button. I don't know. You know, I guess it's a sacred moment when I log in at 12 noon. In fact, we have a, a criteria that where we get judged by it, where, um, I like for, you know, I like for me to be high. Um, we have a criteria, uh, that we're judged on, uh, start to start time to online time or whatever from, uh, you're supposed to clock in at your time, your start time, and you have to be online taking calls within 15 minutes. And there's a metric to see how many times you do that. And I was like, you know, my metric was like always high because, you know, I don't mess around. I don't do that late stuff. You know, if I say 12 o'clock, I'm going to be there at 1140. So I don't just let's say so it's inherent to me. And so I'm just always, you know, my number's always high. Of course, and, and here's another thing. My numbers are always high. My numbers are good. I mean, I set, I set a metric for myself. And, I, and one way I can think of it is that, that I am not going to give my 100 percent. I'm not going to give 100 percent. Of myself to probably anything. I'm just not lazy. I'm lazy like that. I may even call it a funk thing to where, you know, funk, do the best you can and funk it, you know, or something like that. Or I'll keep some back for me. I'll do 85, 90% and keep that 10% for me at any, you know, pretty much most of the time. So to make sure that I'm doing enough <clears throat> or that I, you know, I'm going to do set the bar. And if I can achieve this level, that means anything I do. Once I achieve that level or, or set this standard to maintain, I can do extracurricular. And I was thinking that, you know, growing up, I was always, oh, okay, here's, here it is. Okay, okay, I'm getting all excited. Okay, I'm getting all excited. Okay. I, was, I had a one-on-one -on -one with my boss and I asked him, I said, yeah, you know, how come, you know, I, you know, we do these performance reviews. I'm always at the top. You know, I'm always 86, you know, I'm, you know, I'm always at the top. And, you know, I get it, you know, because I'm this and that. And I'm like, how do other people not always be at the top? You know, and I don't want to I really don't want to think it's aptitude and I don't think I don't think it's capability or aptitude to a point. I don't think it's capability or aptitude to a point. And he broke it down. He said, man, <clears throat> he said, I'll tell you. He said, as many times as you told me you love this job, <laughs> he, he said, as many times, every time I talk to you, <laughs> you tell me how much you love this job. But I do. And he said, well, if you wake up in the morning and you love your job, guess what kind of job you're going to do every morning? <laughs> and I went, oh, I was like, oh, just not everybody loves their job as much as I do. I was like, oh, because I remember when I was in a position where I wasn't, I wasn't happy. I remember I, I wasn't happy. In fact, I walked off a job. I literally walked off the best job I ever had. I just packed my stuff up one day, just walked away and didn't care what happened and, wasn't, and didn't know when I was coming back. I went to HR and said, I don't know, I got to get out of here. I don't know if I'm coming back or not. And then, so I got out and, you know, then something happened and I ended up going back for a little bit, but I was on my way out. 
I was done. I had been there for a few years, you know, and I was like done. I was like, you know, cocky, thinking I can go somewhere else and get some other job. But, you know, I had lost my enthusiasm for the job. So from my, and my performance suffered. And a couple of times, the other job I really wanted to get out, I deliberately tanked my performance. In fact, one time I was in a meeting and my boss, who I like and respect and everything, you know, you know, and I, you know, I was, you know, trying to be as polite and respectful as possible. She asked me, she said, well, Jeff, did you do this? And I went, did you do this task that we assigned to you? And I went, no, I didn't. And I tried to do it as politely and, you know, professionally as possible to let them know I'm not in it anymore. I mean, I'm just not, you know, I'm not in it. I'm ready to go, you know, because you got to get laid off. You can't get fired. <laughs> If you get fired, you don't get unemployment. So there's been many a time where I've negotiated a uh, exit firing or an exit layoff. <laughs> but, you know, so he was telling me, you know, some people ain't happy in their job. You know, it could be aptitude. It could be capability. It could be experience. But he just said people, some everybody ain't happy. You know, everybody just ain't happy in their job like you are. So you wake up in the morning with enthusiasm. You ready to go. I can't. Get, you know. So <clears throat> I wonder if that, that probably happens in bands too. That probably happens in bands and oh, I don't want to go down this road, but <laughs> it probably happens in band too. And I don't want to start talking about the, how the dysfunction of a certain band that a lot of us follow and how some of us may think that that dysfunction is part of the music. <laughs> some of us may think that dysfunction is part of music. I brought that up to somebody else and they, they were, they totally disagree and they presented an argument to me that where it it it, it, it may hurt more than you suspect or whatever he just presented a, a, a argument that no nah, that may not be the case but funk isn't happy funk is funk is driven and it's not happy it's celebratory and it's strong but there is a in there you know, when you play funk right, there's a. Now, when you play that, you know, uh, KC and the Sunshine Band. Oh, that's Wild Cherry, my bad. I always think of do a little dance, make a little love. Some people think that's funk. I think that's funky. That's happy. That's not the. Or flashlight. There's a power. Knee deep. There's a power, and there's like a backstory to it. A backstory that I used to always want to call dysfunction, you know, because um, it's been said that Mr. Clinton manufactures that dysfunction sometimes. I mean, it's been stories that he manufactured that dysfunction in that band uh, by bringing in players. <laughs> Speaking of bringing in players, oh, I don't want to go down this road. I don't want to go down this road. I don't want to go down this road. I was just thinking, I was, after seeing that damn band, if Blackbird was to come back, and you'd have Blackbird, Hampton, Shider, and God's Weapon on guitars, with Mr. McKnight playing that rhythm under Mr. Hampton's super loud lead, I digress. I digress. I mean, Mr. McKnight hitting that up for the downstroke, the way he hit that twang and that little wow. I mean, to me, that's the best. He's the best rhythm guitar player. That's my most favorite best rhythm guitar player by far. Undis undisturbed, unthreatened. You know, well, there's other ones, but that's the one. When, when they started playing that Poo Poo Man's hits, they turned that song around. And the way they played up from the downstroke, sometimes it just goes into that. And that, he gets that down, playing all those, whatever that down, whatever that is. Oh, my God. Anyhow, I was just thinking, imagine him playing that. And Trey Fiel, and I think his name Trey Fiel, I always call him God's Weapon. God's Weapon and, and Mr. Scheider, who's playing more and more thin chords or licks or whatever you call them, riffs. Because I look to see, I see who's playing that. And I look and I watch to make sure it's say, oh, that's Mr. Shatter playing that. Okay, they're like the like uh, you know, the on the uh, I'll stay or something like that, whatever those songs, the little dee doo doo in the back. I'm like, oh, he's playing that. Just imagine to have Mr. Hampton, because Mr. Hampton is hot. Mr. Hampton, last time I saw Mr. Hampton, a few times I see Mr. Hampton, he's been hot. He's just nailing it, energetic, he's like almost into the music, you know. You know, Mr. Hampton and his antics. 
There wasn't none. You know, he's been there focusing. In fact, one time, Mr. Anthony actually went out into the audience and walked around the whole venue playing Maggie Brain. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> he was actually uh, participating with the crowd. I was like, is that Mr. Hampton? <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's good. To hear. And his, one thing about his guitar is just so loud. His guitar was so loud one time, I couldn't hear Clip do the on my behalf. <laughs> And I was like, Mr. Payne, I was like, we can't hear you. You might as well stop talking. <laughs> but see, but on that, that's the way I like my lead guitar. To be just blasted, not in the mix. Just so loud and so clean. It just, just wrecks your ears, but it's right there in the tone of the music. And you got his cousin lies back there hitting that bass line and Vinzel doing the drums. They've been doing that for like 10, 12 years now. So, you know, he got it and and when I say got it, that means he's been trained under that P-Funk family to have that, whatever that thing is, to play it that right way, whatever that right way means. Anyhow, where was I going with this? Oh, yeah, I was just talking about my job. And, you know, he was saying everybody ain't happy at their job. And so they, you're going to have different levels of performances. And then he also went on to say, you need everybody like that. He said, you need people like that because if you have people like me who are motivated, excited, and ready to go, you can't have all... A achievers or whatever. You gotta have middle, middle, middle people in the middle who, you know, are whatever, whatever, whatever. But uh, you know, I would just think about that job performance and if you're happy and how happy you are. And probably the same thing has to go with life. If you're happy in life, life is gonna be the same way. You wake up in the morning, <laughs> you know. I, I'm I'm used to waking up like that. I'm used to waking up, yay, it's today, and just go, ooh, yeah, what, what you know. But with this sinus stuff and these headaches, I haven't been having that. And I'm realizing that, whoa, you know, I'm not feeling good. This, I'm not feeling right. Something's wrong. And then when I come back to feeling right, kind of like when I'm now, you know, I still got a little bit of nose thing going on, but I've still got my energy back. I still got this back. Like I was singing yesterday, last, yesterday. I haven't, you know, just singing. Oh, I was like, for this I owe you something good. I was just singing that. I was, you know, this came out of me. It was a spirit that came out of me, and I, have, I may or may not have had that in a while, a few days. But anyhow, what was I saying? I'm not sure what I was saying when I was doing. Yeah, you, I got to sit up like this, or my my moves show, and it, I don't like for my moves to show. Or I can pull my shirt down. I'm sensitive about my moves, so don't talk about them. Don't be rude. Don't be rude. Anyhow, my name is Jeffrey. Just want to throw this at y'all. I forgot what I started to talk about this for. Playing with my cameras. They got my Mevo $400 cameras sitting over there that I can just plug and play anywhere I go. Look at that beautiful thing. I got that thing set up on a little clamp that I got from Home Depot. And my sister gave me these, these GoPro gadget accessories that I learned how to mount on them. And I got a whole system so that I can go anywhere. I can go anywhere with my cameras and do what I need to do. You know, and that's... And how important is that to, in the grand scheme of things? Maybe not as important, but how much, how important is it to me? It's probably important to me because it makes me happy. I like doing that. I can just, on a Friday night, I can just, you know, sit home and do that. You know, there was things going on. Taste the Inglewood, you know, Super Bowl weekend, partying, blah, 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 blah. I'm content sitting at home eating pizza, playing with my cameras. But then again, you know, and that's probably because I get out there. Let's just be honest. That's probably because I get out there and I do things and I'd be around here. I got me there. It's going to be this place next week. It's going to be that place the week next month, you know, seeing that band, blah, 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 whatever. But, you know, and then granddaughter and family and, you know, I got a lot going on. I got a good life. I mean, there's just no doubt about it. I have a very, very, very good life and I should be much more grateful. But as I've said before, I got to get going. As I said before, I love my feet. My feet are very important. But if I have to sit and be grateful and, and praise my feet, I won't get anything done. There's some things you just got to take for granted and keep going through life. If you stop and realize the significance of your breath or your feet or your hands, you get trapped and you won't make any forward progress. So you got to take some things for granted just to keep things going and then pick out moments that where you have gratitude and let the sensation of how wonderful life is come down on you. Because sometimes it can be overwhelmingly good for me and I will need to stop and just let it pass. <laughs> anyway, my name is Jerry. Swinging on y'all two times. Once for me. And once for the funk. And also for 
every single elementary particle or atom that has existed in this or in any universe that has ever existed. The totality of it all, y'all, is about everything. Nothing can be censored. Nothing at all. My name is Jeffrey and I'm out.